Hello and welcome to Crusade Now. I'm Michael Lasseter. I'll be your host today. With me is my good friend David Brown. And we're talking about current events today. Now, uh, you know, the reason that we talk about current events, the reason that we care, is because of what the Bible says about it, that we are to be watchful, that we're to be looking for the Lord's return, and there are things that are telling us when His return is imminent, and those are some of the things that are happening right now. Amen. And, you know, God made a plan. He's outlined His plan in His Word, and He's told us from the beginning what the end was going to be. Yeah. One of the great evidences of the divine nature of Scripture, the fact that God wrote this book, is that He predicts what's going to happen thousands of years before it ever occurs. I mean, we see that over and over again. Nothing else, even Nostradamus, at his very best, you know, he's maybe 50% accurate. But the prophecies in the Scripture always come true. That's right. And because the knowledge of the holy days has largely been ignored, most people, even those who name the name of Christ, don't understand that God is working out His plan. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the Bible over and over again be proven true. You Amen. know, things that people thought were never possible. You know, right. there's no way Israel will be a nation again. There's no right. way that they're ever going to be able to have a temple rebuilt. And right. these are things in our lifetime right. that we've seen happen. Amen. You know, I mean, to Israel being its own sovereign state and, right. you know, they're having a chance to have a temple again. And, and right. these are all things right. they just prove, like you were saying, the trustworthiness of this prophecy that's in, the, in this Bible. That's right. You know, I think it was 1,500 years or better, there was no nation of Israel. And right. if, if you'd read one of the prophecies that talks about how the Antichrist would sit in the temple of God and declare himself to be God, then people would have laughed you to scorn. What do you mean in the temple? Right. There There's is, no yeah, temple. It was destroyed. The people you know, have, yeah, they are over spread a thousand all years of, ago. Absolutely so. And yet here we have in our lifetime, we see the nation of Israel reinstated. In fact, it's the most miraculous thing. They were tested early. It yeah. was maybe 10 years after they were established again as a nation that all the surrounding nations were encamped around them with much superior forces. Yeah. Multiple thousands of tanks and troops were surrounding Israel. And we see young women, college girls, with Uzis on their back riding bicycles put those armies to flight. Oh, they were vastly outnumbered. Is that... I mean, the, 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 I mean, the, the armor that this enemy had, they had tanks, they had planes, they had everything overwhelming odds right. against Israel. But Israel had God's protection. That's right. You know, and he, you know, his hand was upon them. That's why they survived. That's right. And that's instructive to us. When we see uh, what the events are around us, we can understand that everything is exactly on time right now in the world. God is bringing his plan to fruition oh, and absolutely. it will happen and he's never left one generation in the whole of scripture without a witness the warning has always been going forth the thing is not many people over time have heeded the warning listened and avoided the trouble most don't right you know that's been the sad case is that most people ignore the signs that's right and we know jesus talked about that and that's that's what we'd like to begin with what Jesus said about that very thing. Amen. So let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 16. And we'll look at verses 1 through 3. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees came up, and testing Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he replied, Look, when it's evening, you say, it'll be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning, there will be a storm today for the sky is red and threatening. Do you know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but cannot discern the signs of the times? Now, here Jesus is leveling an indictment. Now, anybody that you know can look up at the sky and see that when there are clouds in the sky, when they're dark and you hear thunder and lightning is coming down, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, you know what, we're going to have a storm. And Jesus is telling the Pharisees they should be able to look around and see the signs that were spoken of. Look at how many prophets in the scripture going way back all the way to the beginning. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. How many prophets, David himself in the Psalms, 
told of Jesus' arrival on the scene. Now, if the Pharisees had been the true students of this book they claimed to be, they should have been able to see that Jesus was, in fact, the Messiah. They should have known yeah. the signs of the times, and it should have prompted their behavior. But frankly, they knew much more about this current, present age, these physical details, than they did about the deep spiritual things that God was bringing to pass. The kingdom of men. Right. You know, they were comfortable right. with the kingdom of men, and that's one reason they didn't understand the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, when they saw it, it was not familiar to them. Right. You know, because they hadn't been living it. You know. There's a stark parallel, in fact. If you look at the children of Israel, you know, when Caesar was pleading with them, please, look, this man has done nothing worthy of death. Why don't you let me let him go? And that they would say, no, no, we have no king but Caesar. They chose Caesar. They really wanted this present world more than they wanted the kingdom that was to come. And unfortunately, you know, that's been the story of mankind from the beginning. And, you know, that, that was a separation. It was. You know, I mean, you had the separation right. that began, like you were saying, in the beginning at creation. Right. After man sinned, you had the separation from God. Right. And then, you know, when Jesus himself shows up and, you know, they continue to push away the things that he said. Right. Finally, when he gets to there, they just say it in the right. most clear way. We That's have right. no king but Caesar. That's right. You know, as for him, put him outside the city. We don't even want him in our city. Right. That's right. Now, there are a lot of things going on on the world scene now that uh, Scripture has told us about for a long time. I tell you, you, look, you take a look around the world right now. And almost anybody, I saw an interesting statistic. It was uh, taken just recently. They had about over 50% over of people in the United States believe that we're living in the last days. Well, I find because that remarkable. You, could just, you can look around and you could say there's no way that this can keep going on. Right. There's just right. no way with the things that are happening in Russia, in Iran, right. in Israel, right. you know, with the Palestinians. And sure. The, and the Israelis, so the things that are happening in our own country, right. with the European Union asserting right. themselves, right. you know, and we've all seen, you know, the, uh, you know, almost the, the helplessness of the UN. Right. You know, they they put the UN together, and really the UN is not able to do, no, you know, much I, of anything. I think case in point would be we observe what happened in Georgia as the Russians invaded. And all we really can do is please don't do that. Sure, that's you know, right. That's, and that's essentially that's, that's what the EU, you know, raised objections and had absolutely no power to change events that were on the ground. And so uh, there's not going to be an awful lot of respect for an institution that can't back up its warnings. Right. That's just the way that it is. But, and you had mentioned the EU. And here recently, in fact, I think if we look over the last eight years or so, the pride of American power has been sort of systematically broken. And the status of the European Union has gotten greater. Yeah. They're, they're in a stronger position than they've been in a long time. Yeah, you can see the, um, the European Union is doing very well right now. That's right. You know, some of the things that, uh, you know, we read 